Okay, we're going to talk about... What are we going to talk about? Butcher block. Okay, butcher block on our table. Okay, so this video is made if anybody's considering using butcher block, even if it's not in an RV, this is just going to give you some things that we've learned about working with butcher block that I think you should, should consider. Um, so I'm going to take one very first. Butcher block is heavy. And I was heavy moving it. My concern was this is too heavy to put in an RV. Once I took my third trip to the dump uh, that was over 1,200 pounds of stuff, this was stuff we're taking out of the RV. Once we did that, I realized that we probably have a lot less weight in this RV, and so we can stand for that. Are you clapping for me because I'm talking? Yay, Daddy! I, I talked. Yay! Can you clap for us? Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay! Good job. So the reason I went with butcher block is because I wanted more of an earthy feel. I wanted it pretty. And butcher block has a very nice, rich look to it. We kind of did the raw accents. Our trimming has its unfinished wood just stained. So I wanted, I wanted to bring in a little bit more of the natural look to it and butcher block was very good option because it's sturdy we didn't have to put it together you could buy it put together which was always a plus plus. and that brings to the other point is that you can buy butcher block pre-made we bought ours at home depot you can buy it in different sizes and so we were able to buy it a nice longer piece a longer rectangle piece that we could use for the kitchen we had enough for the bathroom we also had enough that we were able to use for the kitchen table that we still cut and used elsewhere it worked out almost perfectly we had enough left over that we have two cutting boards one thing you need to understand too when you're doing working with butcher block is that as soon as you take it out of the wrapping as the instruction says says you need to uh, apply some type of sealant is what they said and we had to go back to home depot we had taken ours out of the wrapper and it had been out there for a couple of days and we're like what are we supposed to do to this thing <laughs> well because we we weren't quite ready to install it when we bought it so we just stored it back behind the rv underneath the tarp and it kind of warped a little bit by the time we got it out of the packaging the packaging had ripped so it wasn't sealed anymore yeah. so when we took it out it had a nice good bow in it and we were a little worried about that okay so if your butcher block warps and you want to fix it or any wood board that warps what you do is you put some water on it on the concave side so the cup the portion bowl. the bowl portion you wipe that water so it's nice and even. And then um, you turn that over and you usually wanna put it on top of something that can hold that moisture in there. So like you wanna lay down a tarp or some plastic and then put that over top of it. I think the one video that I saw said you don't really necessarily need to put anything on top of it, but we decided to put some weight on top of it. And our couch. Yeah, we put our couches in their box on top of it. <laughs> and that then, um, it basically what happens is I guess it sucks in the moisture and then it kind of fixes the bow. I wouldn't say it's perfect. It didn't perfectly do that. No. It still had a little bit of bow, but it helped for the majority of it. Um, the other thing that you have to do is condition it regularly because it's not a finished. There's no seal on it, which again, I liked that. I liked that aspect of it, that it was raw. A key thing you need with the conditioner is it has to be used for edible surfaces. So it should say that on there. And Home Depot had two different kinds for us. And one of the things they said is, usually want to buy a, a, a good chunk of it because I think they don't always carry it. I think people will come in and take it off the shelf and then it takes a while for it to get back into stock. And so we bought like seven bottles and I think we've used the majority of them. So what they had you do is, is apply it, um, rub it in and let it sit for quite a while and then wipe off the excess. So it would seep in, kind of seal it. It kind of makes it not waterproof, but the, the water does pool on top better than up. it would yeah. had it not had any conditioner on it. So the brand that we found that worked well for us was, was a Howard uh, butcher block conditioning. We haven't had any complaints about it. I think it's worked really well. You just apply it with a rag. You can wash the rag afterwards. It's not a big deal. I did want to add that when we cut the butcher block, I didn't want the sharp edges, obviously. Um, not only for us, but we have lots of kids running around. So I used a router on the edges to make them nice and curved and then just sanded that so that they were all 
good and even. The ones in the bathroom, I actually just used the sander on the corners because it worked just as well and I didn't want as much taken off. Overall, I think we're really happy with the butcher block. I think it's been a really good choice for us and we haven't had any other issues besides what we talked about in our kitchen renovation where we did have some of the strips of butcher block that we used to do a trim that they kind of expanded as we got into wetter climates. And uh, I don't think that's too big of a deal. We were able to fix that, but that's something to watch out for as it kind of expands and contracts, I guess, as weather. Overall, it's, I think, got the look that we were looking for. And also it's just, it stands up to the, what the kids put it through too. So yeah. I think it was a good choice. Yeah, me too.